All right, what's up? Welcome back to 918 Disc Golf, and welcome to the month of April. Another episode of Leveling Up, this time at Riverside Park. Let's get over to hole one for some introduction. Okay, before we get into hole one, because I seem to keep missing it, I wanna give you guys a little ratings update. So, month of April, ratings update has happened. I am now sitting at 944, which is technically seven up from when I first started the series. So we are making progress, which is a good thing. But to those that are new to the series, basically what I did was I created a series where I want to improve my game every single month by trying to shoot around 30 to 40 points above my rating. So of course for this month, that would mean I'd want to shoot around 975. However, we're going to go a little bit higher than that because when I looked at the last Riverside Glide, which happened like 11 years ago, nine down would be about that mark. But a little history about myself at this course, I work downtown and this course is like a eight minute drive from where I work. So I've played this course several times and there was a stretch of nine rounds in a row where I shot nine down. And so I called it the nine down curse. We're gonna try to beat that. So we're gonna go for 10 down today. Of course, in true 918 disc golf fashion, I have not warmed up one bit. I'm going on 200 milligrams of caffeine and no food. So we'll see how this goes. And it wouldn't be Riverside if there wasn't a little bit of wind to contend with. Hole one's gonna be 303 feet. Plays out underneath, the, just past the tree out there, a little underneath it. We're gonna go instinct off the tee. It's a little bit of a headwind, so I wanna put this on some hyzer. All right, fight out of that now. All right, it's a little short. Probably should have dissed up a little bit with the headwind, but we'll take it. This would be an absolutely massive putt to start the round. Slight headwind, uphill. We'll give it a good bid. Look like Trevor Staub with the hyzer on that putt. We'll tap out our part, move on to two, or we can talk a little bit of game plan. All right, now that we're on the box of hole two, we can talk a little strategy. I didn't because we had a couple groups lining up to play hole one, so I wanted to go ahead and get ahead of them. This entire course is par threes, so par 54 course. Ultimately, the only thing that I care about doing is on the front nine, I wanna to try to get to four down, and then on the back nine, six down. Leaves me with a little bit of buffer with some holes that I can mess up on. And ultimately, with me missing hole one, uh, that leaves me with four more holes that I can I can miss, uh, essentially. So, hole two, 310 feet, again plays out underneath the tree. You can go forehand here, uh, but with the headwind, I feel like I would turn it over and it'd just be OB in the road. So we're gonna go with a backhand hyzer, I'm gonna go boss, underneath the trees on the right side, hopefully get a skip in towards the basket. Not a great start, but this is real. So, you know, I'm not gonna cheat. If I don't hit the mark, I don't hit the mark. I love myself with a little bit of an upshot. It's probably about 120 feet, slightly uphill. I'm gonna go backhand, stand still with a zone. Oh yeah, sit down. Mm, that might be a little tester putt to start us off. All right, it's okay. We're okay, we can do it. And speaking of something I'd be okay with today, That'd be a three on this hole. It's 420 feet, plays down into the right towards the walking path. My goal today is just to get some distance out there. So we're gonna go arrive and uh, try to play it, have it maybe fight the wind a little bit. Get off of that. Well, I actually might have a putt. That worked out way better than I thought it would. All right, definitely in range for a putt. Probably about 45 feet. Again, headwind putt. I'm just gonna give it a little bit, see if we can't Give it a chance since we missed hole one. Ah, player two. There he is. Now, I suppose that would probably be cheating putting a second time, but I didn't warm up, so we're gonna consider that okay. First real musket, as if the first two holes weren't already muskets. Hole four, 245 feet, pretty much just whatever you want to try to get there. I'm gonna take my quake or I put it on a hyzer on the outside of that tree up there, have it kind of hyzer into the hillside, and usually I'll have a look at the basket. I didn't go outside of the tree. Oh, don't go on the road. Woo, boy, that was very close. Uh-oh, that's not great. I seem to recall having a downhill headwind pup before and uh, I think I argued that that's the harder putt to make, but now we've got an uphill tailwind right to left. Oh no. Well, that's not the direction you want to go. 
So one over through four, hole five, another one I consider a musket. 230 feet, but he's right up there by the trees. We're gonna go Pathfinder uh, and see if we can find a path to the basket. Do it, one time. Okay, this still, I think I'm tap in range, we'll see. Putting is not feeling great right now. I'm gonna be completely honest, so we'll see how this goes. All right, hole six, back to square one, even par. 260 feet, ideally a forehand, uh, but you can also go backhand turnover if you'd like. I'm gonna go forehand with the Vanguard. That'll do, donkey, that'll do. Now these are the type of putts that I need because if I can birdie out, we can still hit our goal on the front nine, four down, which would put me in a great position for the back nine. I don't like having to go into the back nine, having to perfect the, the back, but if that's what we have to do today, that's what we have to do. All right, coming into hole seven, 365 feet, walking path on the left-hand side, plays OB the whole way. Pretty much just an open hyzer. We're gonna go Emperor and uh, give ourselves, hopefully, another birdie look. Now settle down. Don't skip hard. Oh, okay. Got a little roll up at the end, but it's still sitting in a great spot for a putt. Another one that I would probably call tester range today, but I need to put this in so I can be two down for the round so far. You know, that's just the way that it goes, right? We know that we're gonna have to score on the back nine now. All right, hole eight, we got a tailwind. 275 feet, uh, plays up there kind of in the dirt. If you can settle something up near it, you usually get stopped by some of the rocks up there. We're gonna go fuse and just try to play straight at it. Come back. That's, that's, uh, that's to the practice basket, apparently. All right, luckily it didn't go as far as I thought it did off the tee, but still not an easy putt to make. Got a left or right crosswind, about 25 feet. <sighs> nope. The thing with these challenges is if the putt is like even slightly off, they feel extremely hard. And I think that is technically the difference between like a pro player and an amateur player is putting. So I guess it kind of speaks to that effect, but either way, it's not fun coming out here and then doing this. Oh my goodness. I'd like to actually make the putt in the center and not on the left-hand side of the chains. We'll see if I can do that today. Okay, last hole in the front nine, 235 feet, par three right there. You can go up the middle, you can go on the left-hand side of the forehand. With the tailwind we have today, I'm gonna go up the middle with a zone and try to give myself another tap in to at least get to two down to take some pressure off the back nine. That might do it, that might do it. Nope, nope. That's a tester today. Don't think about it, Jacob. Just putt. There we go. Before we get into the back nine, I'm gonna level with you guys a little bit. Bad news, we only shot two down on the front nine, which is honestly kind of embarrassing, but it happened when we passed it. Good news, a lot of this back nine is very scorable with even a couple of ace runs in there. So technically not mathematically out of it until the very end. Starting on hole 10 here, we've got a big hyzer or forehand shot, 320 feet out there. I am gonna take my PD and just put it on a wide hyzer and hopefully it crashes into the basket. We do have a little bit of a tailwind, so that helps. No, that's too low. It's gonna hit the tree. If there was ever a time to clutch up, it'd be now. Got about a 45 foot stepper to keep our chances of leveling up alive. Nope, never got a chance to get there. All right, more bad news. That was the only hole that I could miss on the back nine. And the next two holes are the hardest, starting with hole 11. 335 feet, right out there, you probably can see it through the trees. Really, it's a hyzer line. Thankfully, we have a right to left tailwind, so it should help push this to the basket. We're gonna go Emperor and just try to play it wide in this gap between the two trees. Get off of it. That is uh, extremely short. Longer putt than the last one. Not looking good, but we still have to give it a chance. So we're gonna go a little jump putt at the basket, see if we can put it in. This would be 
massive. <sighs> Never had a chance. Now, I could end the video here, knowing that even if I birdie out, I don't technically hit the, hit the line. However, that's not the kind of person I am. And also, I think you guys probably want to see what else I can do out here. And it, if nothing else, it helps to get a baseline because conditions will probably be similar no matter when I play this course. There's usually some wind plays right alongside the river. So we're going to keep it going and see what happens. And, you know, something I was thinking about with this series is like the core main things that make the, the videos go well. There's two things. One, I got to play bogey free because obviously you don't want to go backwards. Two, if I'm making everything within, I'd say 22 feet or so, generally I'm gonna hit the line. So, optimism for my next time out here, if I have to come back. But continuing on, hole 12, 350 feet, plays just past that tree. Um, you can go forehand here if you've got it, or you can go backhand hyzer. I'm gonna go backhand hyzer with a rive. Ideally, I'd like it to skip kind of just on the underneath of the, the branches up there, and then it'll usually get you pretty close to the basket. That might be two inside. Or it somehow works out. This would be the hole that I birdie, of course. And you know, the other thing I look at this series for, like not ending the video right now, is kind of like a mental strengthening tool because obviously I know that like hitting the line at this point requires an ace, but not giving up and at least seeing how far down I can go uh, it's just good for like resilience on the course. Like if a round's not going your way, this is important to be able to kind of like solidify yourself and tell yourself, hey, like you're not out of it. Keep going, see what you can do. So that's kind of why I'm not ending the video. Even though when these putts are doing that, I really do want to end the video. All right, but yeah, less yapping, more playing. Hole 13, 300 feet, plays in the shadow of the tree up there. We're gonna go instinct. Again, same little bit of uh, right to left tailwind. I'm gonna play it out wide on the hyzer and have it kind of fade into the basket. Yeah, that should be just fine. Yeah, this time the disc did pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do. Happy with that, a little five footer. All right, now here's where things are gonna get a little funny. You see hole 14, 15, 16, and 17 are very aceable. And while I want to play for score, I also want to play for the mark still. So, hole 14, 250 feet. We're playing for the ace. We're going to go Nordic Phenom 2 on a forehand. Fight the little bit of uh, right to left crosswind. See if we can't uh, hunt some chains. Oh, that's not hunting anything but grass. Very nice, Jacob. Could you argue that it was a poor decision to ace run this hole? Yes. You could also argue not being a goober and not eating breakfast and using a disc that you know is somewhat flippy, and that's all I got, I don't know. Let's make the putt. That's about right for the round, honestly. All right, in order to continue, I now have to ace two times. So mathematically, I'm pretty comfortable calling it at this point. Obviously, I think we all know that uh, month of May, I'm gonna be back out here at Riverside. However, there's a few more highlight reels, so we're gonna keep going. Hole 15, 260 feet. We're gonna go Vanguard, put it on some hyzer and ace run the rest of them. Now fade back. I don't think it has a chance in, in the world for acing, but it's a good looking putt attempt. One and done leveling up player? Absolutely not. Best 260 foot Vanguard thrower? Absolutely. The best about stressing about 10 foot putts? This guy. All right, well, at least we're sitting at five. Hole 16, 200 feet, plays right out there. It's just a little baby hyzer shot. Some headwind. We're gonna go zone. Again, see if we can give it a chance. See, now I wanna play for birdies, and that's still not close. All right, before I put this, I want you guys to weigh in on this. Is this not the most menacing basket in the world? <laughs> It's so low. You could practically just put it in the ground at this point. It'd make ace running more fun. Can we make it into the stumpy basket? Headwind putt. Ha! Ha! Now I want to putt right. Awesome. All right, six down, coming into hole 17, 240 feet. And you already know if the disc works at 260 feet, it's gonna work at 240. Yeah, <laughs> boy.
Do something cool. Yeah, boy! That wasn't cool. I know that I can't hit the mark at this point. I do feel like I've unlocked a new superpower, and that's basically just throwing this disc under 300 feet. I mean, I don't know. I think it's kind of impressive. Nine speed disc, 240 feet, 260 feet. It's pretty impressive in my book. <sighs> Jacob. All right, six down on hole 18, which means there's absolutely no shot that I'm hitting it, even with an ace. However, just to give you guys something fun to watch, we're gonna try three ace run attempts on hole 18 here, 300 feet, place into the trees over there. That has a chance. Oh, fade. Uh. Next up, we got the boss. No shot. All right, and for good measure, we'll go skip shot with the rive. That's got to skip so hard. All right, well, obviously no ace. If you enjoyed the video and you're new here, be sure to like and subscribe, comment down below, do all the YouTube things. But otherwise, we'll see you back here in May. Peace. Yeah.